Alright, most of you should be familiar with iceberg videos, but if not, I'll just give you a short explanation. Basically, an iceberg goes over a topic, and the more deeper you go, the more lesser known things from that topic are stated. Now, one last thing that I'm going to implement in this iceberg is a health system, which basically just shows how confident I am in what I'm saying with the solved state of a cube being like I'm 100% sure I know what I'm saying and the further away I am from the solved state is I'm less sure of what I'm saying. With that being said, get a cup of tea and some snacks and let's get into this iceberg. Rubik's Cube, over three billion combinations, but just one solution from Ideal. World-class cubers. These are the people that are really good at Rubik's puzzles or twisty puzzles. Many of them have gotten world records or continental or national records. These are the people who can solve it in seconds and compete in Rubik's Cube competitions. Whoa! The World Cube Association and Competitions Basically, the World Cube Association hosts competitions all over the world. And competitions, they're not really competitions, they're more of like get-togethers of people who have the same hobby. And if you compete, your results are posted on their website where there are for people to see. The Speed Cubers Documentary The Speed Cubers Documentary is a documentary on Netflix that's about speed cubing. I really don't know much about it, other than the fact that it's a cubing documentary on Netflix because I haven't seen it. Ambience. Ambience is a term used in cubing to refer to a cube that has more or less layers than the original Rubik's Cube, i.g. a 2x2, two two, or a 4x4, four four, or a 5x5, five five, or a 10x10, 10 10, or a 21x21, 21 21, or a 100x100 100 100 cube. Tutorials. These basically teach you how to solve the cube and how it works. And it could be for someone who doesn't know how to solve their cube and wants to learn, or for someone that's more advanced and needs to learn better tricks so they could get faster. If you're watching this video and you want to learn how to solve a cube, I'll leave some tutorials down in the description for you. Peeling the stickers off. Peeling the stickers off is basically taking out the stickers of a Rubik's Cube and rearranging them so that way it's in the solved state. Many people that don't know how to solve a Rubik's Cube back in the day when cubes were stickered probably did this. Mosaics. Mosaics is basically where someone gets a ton of Rubik's Cubes and arranges them in a way to which they make like a picture like of someone or something. They're all over TikTok and it's super cool. Yuxing Du's 3.47 world record. This is the current 3x3 world record. This world record was 0.75 seconds faster than the previous world record, which was 4.22 seconds. Rubik's or Rubik's? I think this is talking about which is the correct way to spell Rubik's. The correct way to spell it for those who are interested is R-U-B-I-K. The creator of the cube, Erno Rubik, his last name is spelled like that. Online cube stores. These are stores that are online that sell speed cubing stuff like cubes, lube, and sometimes obscure and wacky puzzles cfop ru and zz these are the three main ways to solve a rubik's cube as fast as possible and they are used by the fastest cubers in the world now which method out of the three is the best it really depends on which cuber you're talking to minxes Minxes is another form of Rubik's puzzles that take on different shapes that aren't just cubes. 
The two that are in the WCA as official events are Pyraminx and Megaminx. Maglev Maglev is a form of technology that's used in cubes, and it makes cubes faster because it's two repelling magnets that hold the cube together along with the screw and because of that there's way less friction in the core and it allows it to go faster than just having standard springs rubik's brands suck and speed cube companies this is basically just talking about how the rubik's cubes that are made by rubik's aren't as good as the cubes that are made by the Chinese companies. Yes, that is true because the Rubik's cubes are made as a puzzle to have in your house while the speed cubes are made for speed cubing. A Rubik's cube that's made by Rubik's has better quality than a speed cube because if you give it to a young child who is probably gonna end up throwing it around and stuff, a speed cube could break while a Rubik's brand couldn't that easily. Sub 3 solves. Sub 3 solves is when someone solves a cube in under 3 seconds, and yes, that is possible, but you have to get a lucky scramble and you must execute it perfectly. Lube. Lubes are lubricant for Rubik's cubes, and they basically will speed it up or slow it down or make it more controllable. Plus 2s and DNFs. Plus twos and DNFs are penalties that you could receive from failing to solve the cube. A plus two means that two seconds are added to your solve, while a DNF means that your solve is just full on out disqualified. Tied 4.86 world record. This is basically just because Team Mon and Max tied the world record average for 3x3 three three with at an average of 4.86. This is the first time that two people have tied a world record average. Jperm. Jperm is a well-respected member of the cubing community. His channel has over 1 million subscribers and he has inspired many people to start cubing. Jperm uploads tutorials and does reviews that are way better than mine on his channel. Max Park's 508 World Record Incident On the last solve of Max Park's 508 World Record Average, he starts celebrating that he achieved the world record, and everyone starts congratulating him and surrounding him to give him high fives and stuff like that. But during all the celebration commotion, the timer turned off. Now, everything was okay, but had the time not been recorded, Max would have never gotten the world record average. Extra events. Extra events are when an event at a WCA competition is held that isn't official. World records for these events do exist, although they're not shown on the official WCA website. Rubik's Magic and Master Magic Removal. This is basically talking about how Rubik's Magic and Master Magic were removed from the WCA as official events, presumably due to the fact that you, there's no really any puzzle aspect to them. You have to do an action of moves really quickly. The Papa 22. On November 24th, 2015, the Rubik's Cube with the most layers was fully assembled, the 22 by 22. As the first turns were being made on this cube, yeah, that happened. World 2017 Disaster At the Rubik's Cube World 2017 Championship, there was a lot of timer resets. This caused some competitors to just DNF out of rounds and fail to make it to the podium. Sagnacom was most affected by this as his timer reset on his first solve in the 3x3 finals cost him the world championship title. Cubehead vs Jperm Cubing YouTuber Cubehead challenged Jperm to a cubing duel. The cubing community started to hype this up, but Jperm declined the request as Cubehead didn't talk to him or Philip 
the hoster of the Monkey League beforehand. Yeah, I didn't really know that this even happened in the cubing community until I was doing research for this iceberg. Prototype cubes. Prototype cubes are cubes made from a cube company that are sent to the cubers that they sponsor. This is because so that way the cuber can test out the cube and give their review on it so that way the cube company can make more adjustments to it or release it. Rubik's is other puzzles and games. Rubik's has made many other puzzles and board games. Now, some of the ones that they made are the Rubik's Race, the Rubik's Edge, the Rubik's UFO, and many more. Puzzle defects. This is basically when a puzzle has a defect. Now, this can happen over time, like the Tornado V3 stripping issue, or immediately right out of the box. Now, if it's right out of the box, it's most common that the cube store that you ordered it from will send you a replacement. World's 2003 Disaster Now, World's 2003 is remembered as the second world championship of Rubik's Cubes, but it is also remembered as having slipshaw organization from the people that went there. A good example of the slipshaw organization was when competitor Raphael Aragon began to do a 5x5 five five solve. He kept on going and going and going because he didn't know how to actually solve a 5x5 five five five, and there was no regulation that told him when he needed to stop. Eventually, he did stop so he could let the others compete. And because of that, there are now time limits and cutoffs for the more bigger cube events. Me, Myself, and Pi and Dead Accounts Now, Me, Myself, and Pi was a very popular cubing YouTuber in the early 2010s. However, a little bit after his World's 2013 vlog, he sort of stopped uploading on his channel. Now, where Dead Accounts comes in is mainly for cubers that have had social media accounts or WCA profiles, and then all of a sudden they're abandoned. Now, this could either be because they lose interest in the hobby or due to other reasons. However, me, myself, and Pi is not one of the dead account victims. He currently runs a channel called More Pie where he does storm chasing. 11 finger tricks that every cuber should know. Is J Perm's first video on YouTube ever. That's all I really have to say for this one. Cube lawsuits. I think this is talking about when Rubik sued the cubicle and I don't really know much about it. However, if you want to learn more about what happened, I'll leave the link to the, the paper docs of the lawsuit in the description. Diane Zanji. Now this cube back in the early 2010s era of cubing was the cube to have because the GAN 11 Mem Pro didn't exist, the Tornado V3 didn't exist, the RS3M 2020 didn't exist, none of those existed. This was the cube to have, and everyone used it. Even young Felix Zemdegs. <laughs> the overshadowing of 509. At River Hill 2015, Keaton Ellis just broke the 3x3 world record with a time of 509 seconds, and that was very legendary. However, that very same day, Lucas Eder broke the world record with 490. He just broke the sub-5 barrier and took away Keaton's record. Keaton's 509 would get overshadowed by another 509 this time being the 3x3 world record average that was done by Timon.
I have no clue what these mean. Sanding. Sanding is things that most cubers in the earlier days did so the pieces in their cube could be smoother and therefore move, make the cube faster to turn. This was before like all the modern stuff was made and the pieces are already smooth so sanding right now is not really required unless you're a puzzle modder. Mintai. Mintai was the winner of the first Rubik's World Championship in 1982 and broke the first 3x3 world record single with 22.95 seconds. This is the only world record that isn't a CFOP solve, but instead a corners first method solve. The Rubik's Cube cartoon. Now this is an absolute horrifying thing though. back in the 80s. In order to promote the Rubik's Cube, they made a cartoon about it. Similar to how cartoons to promote other toy lines like G.I. Joe and Transformers. This cartoon is literal nightmare fuel. I mean, just look at Rubik. The trouble with Sub 4. This is talking about the many failed Sub 4 attempts in a competition. With Jaden McNeil's 4.97 cube drop being the most infamous out of all of these. Now, there have been successful sub-4 solves in competitions. Martin Telesforo's 4.41 world record? Basically, this was a scandal in which Mexican Cuber Martin Telesforo got a 4.41 second solve, which was way too ahead of its time. So, it was obviously met with suspicion. Now, the solution that he got for the solve is also really suspicious as nobody at that time really had the look ahead for a triple X cross J perm solution. This is often referred to as el fail, which means in English, ugly. Even with no video of the actual solve, many people suspect him that he cheated and that's ultimately what happened as he got banned from the WCA. Now, some people think that this truly was his solution, but I don't really think so considering the fact how ahead of its time that solution was. Dead websites. These are basically just cubing websites that have been lost to time and because the internet has been updating. Now these websites haven't been updated, so they're dead now. And that was it for this video. Thank you all so much for watching. Comment, like, and... The Moyu RS3M 2019. This is an image of a prototype version of the Moyu RS3M 2020. Now, it could have been that Moyu intended to release this in 2019, but it got bumped back to 2020 for unknown reasons. Sub 2. No matter how hard I researched, I could not find a Sub 2 3x3 solve. Now for 2x2, two two, they're everywhere. Scrambled 1x1. One one. There are some tutorials for a 1x1 one one cube on the internet. However, the only thing is, there can only be a tutorial for a puzzle if there was a way to scramble it. Meaning that someone managed to scramble 1x1. One one. Rubik's Cube Rule 43. Do not research. What I saw will forever traumatize me, so I don't want anyone else to see it. You should do 3.47 alternative angle. Now, I believe that someone filmed the solve actually, and that there is an alternate angle of it. But, I don't know, I could be wrong. I hope I'm not, so that way we can get another angle of the solve with clearer video.
every GAN flagship is personalized. Basically, every single GAN flagship is personalized, and each one is different from the other. Even two GAN cubes that use the same setup with lubes and everything are different from one another. And that's the Rubik's Cube Iceberg. Thank you all so much for watching this video. Comment, like, and subscribe if you want more videos just like this one. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye.